Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a another Kazar Zoo. And Kazar Zoo is one that just doesn't feel like it should be effective, and it continues to prove itself time and time again. Things like Dracula are so powerful in being able to dodge Shang-Chi's, being able to be played into like Yoden time early, and then knowing that that power gets reset, you get a lot of utility from the Dracula. It's great behind a storm lane if the opponent storms a location. It makes it hard for them to use Professor X lockdowns. It just makes the overall opponent, any kind of control they want to have on the game, a lot more difficult. And so for this version, we kind of went with a different line. We went with a little bit heavier of a curve than what I normally run, but there are a couple of main reasons for that. Right now, we are seeing Galactus, or I'm seeing Galactus just about as much as Shuri and way more than Thanos. And so I want to make sure that I have a couple of ways to deal with any Galactus anytime it comes up. And so for this list, that's gonna be our Polaris and our Cosmo. And so Polaris, a lot of times you're gonna be able to pull, as long as you have initiative, which against the Galactus list, you should be able to, as long as you identify it early, you should be able to pull one of their one cost cards, their two cost cards out of the lane that they played them in and over into the lane that you think they're gonna be playing Galactus in. And then if you don't have players, you have Cosmo. As long as you have the initiative, then you're gonna block the Galactus and uh, then you can just kind of go on about your way and find a way to win from there. It's a really high impact, low curve deck that also runs a Red Skull and an Infinite. I've seen a few versions that end up cutting Kazar and I never felt like I, ne I necessarily needed to. I tested out a version with She-Hulk because if I'm gonna skip and float, um, then I'm able to play She-Hulk a little bit cheaper. But it always felt a little bit more clunky. I wasn't as confident going into some of those turns whenever Dracula was in play. And it always felt like I was battling between should I skip here and soak or should I actually play cards? And then you end up getting outpaced more often than not. And so I did go ahead and add back in the Kazar, but I think there's definitely room to just have something else. But Kazar is nice to have on occasion. Everything else about the list runs very, very seamlessly. I tried a version with Destroyer as well. I didn't necessarily care for the like restrictive nature. The, the opponent pulls your cards in with Doc Ock. If Grand Central comes down and you don't have your Zero or Cosmo, it really makes for some uh, ineffective, inefficient playlines. And so this one is about being as efficient and consistent as possible. And so I have had a lot of success with this list over my extended testing. I'm about 60, I'm closer to like 58, 59 range. But I think overall in a bigger sample size, it would be around 55, 56, which is still a very solid list. And if you want to see more of this deck and any of our other decks live, make sure to check us out on twitch.tv slash snap. And with the brief deck explanation out of the way, we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. First up, we have T. Sangin. And uh, T. Sangin is running Thanos. I know it's been a while since we've seen a good Thanos list. It's almost It almost feels like yesterday. We're going to go ahead and play armor into mid. We're going to be trying to gain initiative over them. That way we could try to block a rotation in a lockjaw lane, try to block a leech. Um, and we want to relatively thin out our hand while we can. And so they skip one, two in. Wow. Into Elysium on three. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and play Cosmo, especially if we don't know exactly where the opponent's going to play. But with Elysium, I figured there was a much better chance for them to drop a, a lockjaw and then a rotation. And uh, it looks like they went the She-Hulk and Soulstone path anyways. But we are able to block it and make it a little bit harder for them to do the things that they want to do. So at any given time, at any point in time, we can always do our zero for free and then our red skull. I think we're going to use Polaris in the mid. That, that might make them think that it's our loss lane. And then they follow it up in the right lane with the power stone. Interesting. All of their cards are very cheap. Um, their stones are free, so it's very much like the old Quinjet days. Um, and yet, they're playing it rather slowly. I'm going to go ahead and play Sunspot into Elysium. And then I think we skip and soak. Depending on what we draw next turn, we might be able to play just about everything. We could do Kazar. Eh, we can go ahead and play Kazar onto the board. That way, if we do draw into something like uh, Dracula, then we can still play it. And we can still have that bonus to our Sunspot, our Iceman, our Zero. And so they play a mojo in the right lane. Interesting. I wonder if they're going to try to do something to force us into capping out that location. 
We can do zero to the left. We can do red skull in mid. I don't know. The the mojo is interesting. I'm guessing that it's a like a Valkyrie deck, maybe. Valkyrie deck wouldn't be great because then they could soak with their sunspot, even if we have this one full. Uh, Valkyrie, they could be looking at a at a spectrum. They stacked three ongoing cards in the right lane. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of ifs and or buts we could do. We're going to play zero to the left. We're going to let the right be the right. And then we're going to play our big card into mid. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, so they end up doing a Kang, which explains the snap. Um, it definitely explains the snap. And so now do we do it the same but different this time around? I don't know. I don't know. So if they do pull a card with like arrow, then that's going to hit our red skull, which doesn't feel great. We were going to do the same, maybe stack them both into Monster Metropolis and then uh, hope that our, our split power was enough, but they do end up retreating. So we'll take the first win against the uh, Thanos, looks like Valkyrie ongoing zoo, and uh, we will jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Zenaid. The first location is Shadowland. We're going to go ahead and play our Sunspot. Um, they're running the Nimrod Avatar. Sometimes that's a, a telltale sign of what they're running. They're running Iceman, so I don't think that's the case in this game, but sometimes, sometimes it is. We're gonna, we're gonna skip and soak here. I kind of think we might need to play our rock, but until we get Dracula, it may just be wasting energy and therefore wasting power in our sunspot. We also get Kazard, so then it's gonna equal out to about the same. We just get to spread it across the board. Let's go ahead and pull the negative ninja from their lane over into the dark, the dream dimension to try to further cap out the location. It's either that or we play it into the left and pull Iceman over. Um, but I think I would rather try to cap them out of the right lane instead of the left. And so they do play one card in the left lane um, to follow up their Iceman. It's a Killmonger. Okay, well, it didn't matter that we pulled it. The early Killmonger is interesting. They could be running, I don't know, uh, a death deck. That's still kind of an, an odd choice. Um, I'm going to throw Cosmo into mid. I, do, I have no idea what they're running. The Iceman Killmonger is all we have to go off of. The Typhoid Mary, oof. So they're going to be running like the Sarah, like the, the the hazardous Sarah deck. They can't do Sarah, which is good for us, uh, bad for them. They can't run Sarah here. What we can do on the last turn is do a Red Skull and a Titania. Um, we know that they don't have their Killmonger anymore, so we don't have to worry about that card. Uh, we can't, They can't do an arrow because of the Dream Dimension. Might be even better. We could do Dracula. And then we could do a rock and Titania. Maybe. It really comes down to a read of if they're going to play into this lane or not. So if they only play one card here, then it's going to bounce this way. If they play two, it bounces our way. Um, if they don't play at all, then perfect. Without having Sarah, I don't think they're in a good position. I don't think they're poised very, very well. They're going to play one card in the left lane. Okay, well, I guess the Titania didn't matter. Um, without being able to get Sarah on the board, their power was very, very limited. And so we were going to have a very explosive last turn. And uh, we get the one cube retreat again. People are people are being a little skittish today. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Aware. And uh, you're probably not aware, but we faced them last night. And uh, I, it was for a deck that I was going to release a showcase on. But it's, it's really only probably a 52, 54% win rate deck. And so it doesn't feel as solid as some of my other choices. It feels like certain decks it just can't hold its own into. And so I ended up scrapping the idea. Like I have all of the games. I have all of the video for it. Uh, but I ended up just not editing it together and then going back to the drawing board. But um, on one of those games, it was aware and it was a very, very close game. I think we ended up being an eight cube staked game. And uh, yeah, it was it was so in case you weren't aware. I had a very close match with them that ended up in a net positive of eight cubes. Let's see if we can do that again. So our lizard is going to get zeroed out. Uh, they did snap into our seeing our zero. So I'm not sure exactly what they're running, but we need to we need to kind of pay attention. So the armor, okay, that's fine. It's a three power, okay, and then lockjaw and then wasp. They're running the lockjaw Thor deck. Uh, Jane, Jane Foster Lockjaw Thor is always very solid, or relatively always very solid. They get the extra Sentinels that they can use either as rotation or just to put power on the board. I almost think we drop our Cosmo on the last turn into the Forge once they drop their Doctor Doom. And so we play our Khazar, they 
play is are they play both their sentinels they're getting some value from their from their sentinels that they have from the forge and so stark tower they're gonna get quite a bit of a bonus i don't think we red skull yet i think we probably save that towards the end um polaris isn't gonna pull anything but i think we stack into stark tower that way we get the extra plus two that could give us a big enough lead that after that on the next turn depending on what they play here we can start focusing all of our attention into into mid or into lemuria okay so they have a wasp it rotates into the hulk wow the uh the forge is definitely going to be our loss lane we're, we're not even going to try to to compete over there but since we don't have a shang chi uh, we're just going to let that one be um we do have a pretty sizable lead in stark tower it's a 13 power lead and knowing that this deck typically doesn't have the ability to go incredibly wide, they have usually like a Magneto or a Hulk. They have the Chavez, maybe a Giganto, uh, maybe an Infinite, but they can't do any of those into mid or right lane. So I don't like the Dracula. It would end up being a 50-50. So I think we're going to go Red Skull, and I don't think they can go taller than that. Um, even if they hit like a Doctor Doom, that's not going to be able to spread that. That's a lot, a lot of cards. Okay, so the Sentinel, did they stack two fours? They had to have stacked all of their Sentinels into mid, right? And then it'd be a Wasp rotation. The Red Skull nerf or buff uh, is what is what the difference was here. Without that, we would have lost mid. We are able to hold down the four cube win. We will absolutely take it. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Lagrain. The first location is TVA, so we're going to go ahead and prioritize our Iceman first. Maybe we disrupt the curve of a card that they would have been able to play. They do have Sunspot, so they will be able to soak some. We get some good value out of our Lizard. Um, just by being a turn two drop, it's very unlikely that they cap out this location. So the two five should be very solid for us. We can do Polaris to pull their Sunspot out of TVA maybe. I'm not sure if I'd rather do that or maybe our Sunspot and soak. We are going to go ahead and do the the players though it impacts them with negative two so we're we're equal um and then ooh, so they changed the tva location so we do have ourselves a full game now and uh they're stuck in necrotia and their storm is stuck over here and we can actually fit our sunspot into the storm location now they might do a juggernaut we don't know exactly what else they're using to really lock this one down I'm going to play the Sunspot and then so... Wow, they don't play anything. Interesting. So that feels like it should be a snap. Go ahead and play Khazar into mid. Depending on what gets pulled in by Grand Central, um, we can angle a Cosmo or try to angle a Cosmo where it's most advantageous for us. Um, so the Khazar comes down the Wong. Ooh, that was the Wong decision, my friend. Um, it looks like they're going playing a maybe a go wide deck. Um, but we're going to make sure that they can't... Oh, wow. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. So the Wong goes to the left, which is fine. They Well, they have, a weird, they have a weird line here that could end up allowing them to win. So, <laughs> so if they go with an Odin into the Arnim Zola lane, if they, hap if they happen to have that, the Arnim Zola just surprises me. If they have an Odin, they can re-trigger that. That's 8 to the left lane. That brings them up to 12. And then in the right lane, it brings them up a, a substantial amount as well. I'm going to play Cosmo in the right lane just in case that is not what they end up doing and they go with something like a Doctor Doom and they want to spread wide there. So we're going to go with the Cosmo in Necrotia and then we're going to skip. That would bring this lane up to 12 so that we could actually so that we could meet and tie their potential Odin play. And then it would come down to a point differential, which I think we would win with mid. And so odds are it's probably more in line with like Dr. Doom, which we are going to block. And we are able to secure the four cube win with the goodest of boys, Cosmo. Cosmo is such a card that just hard counters so many play lines. And so having him and players built into the deck to combat things like Galactus is huge. All right, we have too good or not too good. That is the question. Whether it is in the heart of the cards, I, I don't know. I, I, 
the slings and arrows of uh, I know a few lines of that, but definitely not <laughs> uh, definitely not as much as uh, probably some other people out there. So we're gonna go ahead and play our Iceman. We're gonna play our Lizard. The Daredevil comes down. Ooh, we're gonna swap the location of each position after turn four. So that gives us a, a rare opportunity to be able to position our Cosmo where we actually want it to be. But I don't know. I think we're gonna play Polaris. It'll get bounced into Asteroid M. So maybe we just throw it into mid anyways. We're gonna throw it into mid. We'll pull their Daredevil over with the Daredevil that looks like some kind of like, control heavy deck. The Lockjaw is surprising. It's very surprising, actually. Huh, okay. Well, we could do... We can, good, we can do Kazar. And then next turn, we can play Dracula, and it'll get yanked to wherever Asteroid M goes to. I'm curious what they're running, though. Uh, the Daredevil, the Lockjaw, it doesn't look like a standard Jane Foster Lockjaw. Whoa. Is this a Lockjaw Cerebro 2? What could that possibly do? That seems so chaotic. So chaotic, I kind of like it, but also kind of scary. We're going to go ahead and play Dracula over into Asteroid M because it's going to get pushed over that way anyways. Um, and then next turn, we have our Titania and Cosmo we can play. We're hoping to maybe pull into Zero, Armor, or Sunspot. Probably Zero would be our best bet to zero out the Titania. But we'll see. The Mystique comes down to copy the... The Lockjaw Cerebro 2. I am so confused here as to what their tactics are. So confused. We do get the zero. So we can just Cosmo in the right lane. They can't do a brood or anything big there. Um, we can do zero and then tie. Oh, wait, we can't Cosmo over here because it's going to get yanked over to the left lane. Oof, that's uh, awful, scary. We're going to play Zero and Titania into mid. Cosmo is going to initially be here, but it's going to get yanked over into Asteroid M, unfortunately. But just know in my heart that I want it to be in Dream Dimension. We're going to play Zero and Titania. Hope that that's enough to overcome this lane. Whatever they rotate into, I'm thinking can only be one additional six power card. So it's going to be 18 as long as we can beat that. Ooh, wait, this doesn't beat 18, does it? So 5, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17. Ooh, this only hits... 17. That means, unfortunately, we're going to have to play for the right lane. And I think they probably drop a brood over there. Drop a brood, drop a Mr. Sinister. Um, some big, some big go wide, easy spread plays. We're going to go ahead and move our Cosmo into Asteroid M just to let them know that we actually know that that's on the board. And uh, we'll try. We'll see. Uh, I think brood comes down in the dark dimension or the dream dimension. One of the broodlings will get yanked over into the asteroid M. We'll see if it's enough. Mbaku comes down, so then it flips into Iceman. All right, and then the brood, which we did call out the brood, um, and then it gets yanked over, and so we actually win the right lane. We win the left lane um, from just the brood play. Had Mbaku jumped over into Dream Dimension, that would have derailed us. What an interesting, chaotic play line. Uh, it gives you a, a second chance to be able to use your M'Baku, so like they rotated it on the last turn. But it seems like it increases your curve, maybe more than you would want. So I would almost rather have like a like a storm to be able to really lock down those lanes early. Had Asteroid not been here, we I think we could have blocked the Cosmo play. Either way, we were able to overcome their power just uh, just by a touch. Dream Dimension almost wrecked us, but we will go ahead and take the win. And with that one, we are going to go ahead and end the video here. That is actually six in a row, six and oh. I did some further testing outside of recording this video, but while recording, it was the perfect six and oh, which feels good. It uh, feels good to be able to be going on a win streak. We started after the patch at like 102, 101, and we're up to 110 after just like casually recording and streaming. And so uh, we are climbing at a decent rate. And so we'll see where we end up at the end of the season. And... We're going to go ahead and end the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and a comment down below. And as always, this has been TLSG. Later.